one. There we go. Welcome to 30-Minute Reviews. I'm Adam. I'm Peter. Okay. <laughs> and I'm Josie. <laughs> and we're up, up, to, up to our fifth season now. The first episode of season five. Um, so that's fun. You can tell we're full of energy today. Um, you are the also the latest of us. Like, yeah. Well, that was had the most. You had the most time in your day. Okay. Well, to, to be fair, be I didn't wake up until about an hour ago. So, um, yeah. Well, okay. That, I've that been is awake true. for a while now. Um, I've been awake for probably an hour, but for me, that's eight o'clock in the morning. Oh uh, yeah. I've been awake for like three or four hours. Yeah. yeah, I was up very late. So, I have to close like seven tonight, so here. Late. Uh, so I, I sleep in on days. I have to close. Um. So uh, let's see. What have we got for this week's news? Um. The mummy is dying. In uh, did you see that? Uh, the, no, I don't think anyone's here seen the mummy. Cause I don't think anyone in the world has seen no, the mummy. Yeah. Based on how I just saw, I just looked it up. It has a 34 Metacritic. Yeah. Uh, okay. They need to be a little bit less. Uh, they have to tone on the hyperbole when they say uh, the uh, Wonder Woman wrecks the mummy in uh, box office. The mummy made 32. Wonder Woman made 57. That's not demolished. Mm. That's you know. Not bad, but it's not good either. Um, Wonder Woman's only five million behind Man of Steel's ten day total. So I guess that going for it. Um, and let's look at the full weekend chart. Like, like to do now, because it's fun. Uh, see what other weird things are going on here. Um, let's see. Beauty and the Beast, which came out on DVD this week, opened at is at number seventeen. Um, with Three hundred ninety-five thousand dollars. Um, oh, no weird movies this week, this year, uh, this week. Not like uh, last week we had Donnie Darko on the top list. Um, there's nothing weird. Um, there are a bunch of new releases though. Like I didn't notice as many new movies came out. I thought it was just a mummy, but uh, mm-hmm. it comes at night. Also open this week. Um, and it's movie. That's supposed um, to be a good horror movie. Um. Kate Mara has a new movie that came out this week called Megan Levy. Yes, and it's the reason why she has short hair in the season four flashback of House of Cards. Ah, I did not know that. Um, I, I deduced it. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, it I seems my right. So. Abilities. In that movie, she has short hair at one point, I think. Oh, okay. House of Cards, she had short hair. Uh, Tom Felton is also in that movie. So he's going back to movies after being exiled to TV for a while. Um, I think I think it's just his awful American accent kind of uh, threw people away from him putting in, put him into movies anymore from uh, Planet of the Apes. Because then he went back to be on uh, that sh- it was a Murder in the First, I think it was called, on TNT. He was a regular uh, for season one. And then he was also a regular for season three of The Flash and he's coming back for season four. Um, but now he's back uh, in movies. Um, I think it twist... was hard for him to stop getting typecast as D-Bags. Well, uh, 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 the twist in the flash for his character was, like, foreseeable a mile away, considering there was a character called Dr. Alchemy who showed up, and he was um, a villain who uses the Philosopher's Stone. Lol. And uh, it's like, hmm, who could he be? And it's like, okay, well, we... We get it. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, Adam West died. So that's the. I uh, know. Oh, rip. <laughs> rip city bitch. Rip, rip. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. So that was. Um. That 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 happened. I guess all I really say about that. Um. Apparently, Kellyanne Conway. Felt the need to respond about Bruce Wayne proposing to Selena Kyle in the comics for some reason. 
because that was one of the top stories on comicbook.com. Um, she said, uh-huh. and I'm quoting, at last, hope for all. I don't <laughs> understand. That's really weird. I, I Was that a thing that... I, I'm not a big Batman comics fan. Was that something that Batman comics fans were hoping for for a long time? Like... I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, don't, know. I, I, I don't understand. Um, they also need to update the thing on the side here because as the Inhumans is coming out in 2018, that is not true. It's 2017. Um... So Gotham had a huge thing happen. I was thinking of Batman. Um, Got him. Bruce Wayne finally became Batman. Wasn't he like eight when the show started? No, he was. He, I think so, but I guess time skips happen now. He's a teenager. Oh, uh, okay. But the most recent season ended with him in full Batman gear, going to uh, uh-huh. like going not full Batman gear, but like in his fur, like a, a proto Batman suit. Like, going. he's like, hmm, bats. No, it's like... Man. It's like a trench coat, and, like, he's wearing, like, a mask over his face, and, like, it's in, like, goggles. It's meant to, like... It's, like, his first time stepping out as a vigilante. Um, and he saves a family from being killed in Crime Alley. And that's how the season ends. What's going into season four. Gotham. Oh. Yeah, so he, uh, that, that's a, uh, that was pretty strong way to end uh, their season. Um, Let's see, what else have we got? Oh, uh, yesterday, a new trailer dropped for Black Panther. Oh, yeah, I saw people talking about it. Um, Did you see the tweets that went along with it? it? No. So, like, all, like, all of, like, the... Like, people who are, like, supporters of Black Lives Matter are like, yeah, there better not be a single white person at a screening of this movie. So someone tweeted, like, Stan Lee walks into a scene and it's like, who's this white person in my black people movie? <laughs> like, um, the trailer makes it look pretty good. I mean, to be fair, yeah. you could say that about any trailer. Um, and also the, um, the all women screaming, that was a, a private theater did that. Like, it wasn't Warner Brothers doing yeah, that. Yeah, it was one, it was one Alamo draft house, I think in Brooklyn, that was going to do it initially. And then said, um, and then once the outcry started, they're like, okay, we're going to do this at all of our uh, theaters now. Yeah. So, congratulations, you won. Like, to the people who, like, bitched about it, like, you showed them, like. Um, you just go to a different theater. Yeah, exactly. Well, no, 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 they were yeah. doing it, not every screening was that. Every theater did a all-women screaming, screening of Wonder Woman. And the best Wait, was, that's a, that was a thing? Yeah, they did just all at women the, but just, just at the Alamo for, like, one... Yeah, one screening at the Alamo Draft House in each one of them was an all-woman screen. So, like... So, like, only women were allowed to go in? Yes. Yeah. That's stupid? The, the, the problem was, is that they did Sorry, not, uh, that's really uh, stupid. But it's fine, because then the other ones are... Like the other screenings were separate, but they were equal. <laughs> the best it's was stupid on many uh, levels. The like, best was their why. response. Like they go, um, they were asked well, about male only screenings. You never have that, and they go, "Well, we showed Entourage in theaters." <laughs> and you <laughs> think I'm kidding? Pretty, I, I said that that the, that was literally they're saying like, "Well, we showed Entourage in theaters," and that was basically a male only screening. Um, I think that's a good joke. So. Yeah. Huh. I, I did you see Wonder Woman yet? Either sorry, like, no, I haven't, but I've heard very good things about it. I've seen it. You've seen it? I have. Um, did it, you like it's, it? It starts off great with the new. I, I think I texted Peter about it last night. The new, um, like intro for DC. Like mm-hmm. they they did a Marvel style intro. Where... Is it three minutes long? Like no, it's not. Movies? It's short. It's um, if you've ever seen the intro for the Justice League t- animated TV show, it's basically that, but like uh, like half CG, half live action. 
and much, much shorter. Because it's not a full two-minute intro with, like, music and stuff like that. It's mm-hmm. like... Well, for a DC movie, how was it? Because oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even saying for a DC movie. Um, I'm saying in general. I thought... I When I was watching it, throughout the entire first and second act, I thought the movie was as good as Logan when I saw it. Which we're going to talk about. Really? Um, okay. Then the third act happened. And I would say it stumbles, but that's a, that's a misstatement. It entirely shits the bed in the third act. Oh. Like that, that's my biggest problem. The, my biggest problem with the movie comes down to how it ends. And like, it, I don't want to spoil anything. Well, to be fair, I've been spoiling the twist for months now on the show. Cause I didn't know it was meant to be a twist until I saw the movie. Um... But the, uh, I don't want to spoil the... It's not even a good twist, and once you guys see the movie, we'll talk about that. Um, mm-hmm. But it's not the, It's not a good twist. A, a twist you have to lead into. And, like, you have to, like, uh... You, like, there has to be some setup for it. You can't just jump right in and go, okay. Like, there's... If you look at any, like, uh... What, what was that movie? Um, the Sixth Sense. Like, there are hints throughout the entire thing. Of the twist, like that can yeah. indicate that that you, if you were looking for it, you can see indications that that's the case. The twist, the what the twist is, isn't even on screen for more than five, like it's under five minutes of screen time before the final act. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's a little weird, and then uh, also. I, I, I think I said this in the review that I wrote for the website. Um, you can take scenes from the final fight between Ares and uh, Wonder Woman and cut them out and put in scenes from the fight between Wonder Woman and Doomsday and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Like, that's the... Like, there's a dog in here, isn't there? Okay. I don't know. Is there a dog? <laughs> yes, I gotta hear. Uh, I hear it's uh, jingles. It's like uh, my dog is being a dick outside. Um, the you, you, they don't do a very good job with the with the third act. They they that's where they really need to improve, and they need Zack Snyder not being involved at all in the movie. That that's I think what the biggest problem. Um. Because where it's good, you can tell it's Patty Jenkins directing. Where it's bad, you can tell they gave some uh, creative decision making back to Zack Snyder for some reason. Producer, and I'm not entirely sure why that was. Considering anytime anyone complains about something from a DC movie, it always gets traced back to one of Zack Snyder's ideas. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that that therein was uh, the biggest problem. Um, E3 has uh, officially started. So, um, first yes. off, Woo! the only thing we've had so far is EA's conference. Um, and they announced a not announced a number of games. These are all games that were already you know announced. I didn't read anything about the new IPs. We're gonna do that in a, next week in more detail, talking about the newer IPs and stuff like that. Um. Mm-hmm. The uh, cause I want to do it all at once. I want to do like half here and half there. Um, they announced for uh, FIFA the return of their campaign. They announced for NBA Live 2K18 the return of the campaign. They announced campaign mode for Battlefront 2. And they announced a campaign for Madden. So I feel like People complain about there being no campaign in um, in Battlefront 2. And like, all right, you fuckers like campaigns? Here you go. And they get through campaigns into literally everything. There's also a new campaign coming as DLC. How is the campaign in Madden different than just playing through a regular season? Well, the campaign is you play as a character, but get this. You don't get to create the character. They make it for you. And then you get to play through. Wow, what from- a twist. Well, no, but 
like if you ever played like uh, MLB the uh, not not the show um the the two K series that got canceled over controversy um do you, do, do we ever talk about that I, we it definitely happened while the podcast was going on I don't think we ever addressed that um they released two K thirteen then the next year released two K fourteen which was the exact same game with an updated roster and the uh, um, what's it called and the uh, the title screen was different. And people were like, this is the exact same, like, literally nothing changed. No mechanics, no physics, no uh, no gameplay, nothing. Everything was identical to the previous game. It's just they changed the title screen and updated the roster, and they charged $59 for it. So the MLB said, you guys aren't making any more games for us. So now only the show and the MLB's own game, which is god-awful, RBI Baseball, are the only two that come out now for baseball. So if you have a console, you're, uh, if you have an Xbox, you can't play baseball. Um but in that series, there was a game mode where you get to create a character and play through to the majors. Like you got re- you you got recruited by a team, and then you would play through the single A, double A, triple A, and get recruited up to the majors. And you get to play through your career with the goal to get to the Hall of Fame. So the um, the number one problem was um, the new campaigns in the EA series all don't have um they you don't get to create the character it's a it's a preset story and it's the it's over the top if it's like uh nba live where nba live has um like characters die in it for some reason like i'm not playing a sports game for a character driven drama that's very true like it's it's a sports game i play when i buy madden every year um, like a good little corporate sheep, I play through the franchise mode. I pick a team that's one of the worst teams, and whatever team has the lowest official rank, I pick that. I move them to Mexico City. Uh, this year I moved the uh, 49ers to Dublin. <laughs> Literally, the first thing I did when I picked the 49ers is they had the lowest official ranking in the game for 17. Um, first thing I did was um, drop Colin Kaepernick. Mm-hmm. I traded him to I think the um, I think the Panthers. I traded him to not the Panthers, yeah the Panthers. So that way he'd be doomed to be second string quarterback. So that was what I that that was my first big move. And then the um, but I I try to make the team better. I improve them to be a good team. Um, I don't play for the story. Um, I don't understand how there could be a story. It's just you win or you lose. Yeah. Well, they 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 want to make it more like, and the thing is too, this is another issue I had because I just restarted playing Madden recently. Um, they need to fix their matchmaking for online because they have the thing where it's like you the playing cards the the one where you have to build a team with playing cards. I forgot what it's called. Madden Ultimate Team, that's what it's called. The um, I just started playing, and um, the the biggest problem is. I go, um, I, I went online for the first time. My best player was Kirk Cousins, which tells you how bad the team is. And the first person I matched up against has Lawrence Taylor and two other uh, Legacy Legend cards as his best players that are all ranked 99. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, this is my first time playing the game online. And this is your, Did like, you no, I, and I got, I got wrecked. I ended up, um, I ended up quitting at at halftime when I was down um, fifty to seven. Uh, rage and, quitter. And because um, the game offered, the game was very condescending. I was like, it seems like you're having a rough time with playing Madden online. I'm like, go to hell! This is your fault, not mine. <laughs> like you didn't you didn't match me up with someone on my skill level, like or even like skill level is one thing. Like you're not matching me with someone on a team level that's similar. My team rank was around 60. You matched with someone whose team rank was 99. Like, well, like, don't suck. Well, that's the problem with this <laughs> mode is you have to play to get the cards. So you basically have to sit through losing a lot if you start late to get a lot of cards to play on. Um, that, that, and that's the other mode that I hate. I don't understand how anyone plays Madden beyond, um, what's it called, pre-order people. And uh-huh. franchise mode. If you pre-order, you get a bunch of cards for free. 
like I know if you pre-ordered the uh, the Goat Edition of uh, Madden 18, you got uh, you get a bunch of free cards. I didn't pre-order because of that. Um, I pre-ordered because I, I just wanted to get it pre-ordered. Um, not that I was anticipating it selling out or anything, but uh, I just wanted to be able to get it on time. Um, then uh, two other trailers were dropped. Um, first came out last night at about 3 in the morning. I woke up to this news and came instantly. There was a new gameplay trailer for Kingdom Adam Hearts 3. Out. No. Kingdom Hearts 3 got a new gameplay trailer. And oh my god, this game looks amazing. It makes it worth waiting the 15 years I've been waiting for this fucking game. Yeah, maybe we'll just never live up to your expectations. I am absolutely assured that that's going to happen. Or <laughs> what if it only takes you like two hours to beat the entire game? That's what happened, like, I when I got 2.8... Um, they had the new, like, this This should show you how, like, starved for content uh, fans of Kingdom Hearts are. They bought 1.5 and then 2.5. Then they released a game 2.8, which only had in it a movie, Dream Drop Distance, and then a two-hour tech demo for the engine for Kingdom Hearts 3. And played through that. Then they bought 1.5, 2.5 on the PS4. Mm-hmm. After having bought 1.5 and 2.5 separately for the PS3, so and by they you mean you? I think other people did it too. I don't think I'm the only one. <laughs> um, so that that this trailer looked amazing though. There they showcased more of um, Olympus Coliseum. Um, James Woods is back, reprising his role as Hades. Um. James Wood is actually a crazy person in real life. Yes, he is. He's like super conservative and yes, loves he Trump. Is. Yep, I saw that. Um, the they gave this is the first time we actually had hints of the plot in the game because the first two three trailers showcased um, the first trailer just showed like gameplay and that was meant to be a reveal that yes we haven't forgotten about making this game we're still making it. Um, the second trailer showed um, Tangled, the world from Tangled, and the third trailer showed the world from Big Hero 6 and how Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to be a sequel to Big Hero 6. Um, which is weird. That, that, that's almost never happened. I don't think there's ever been a video game sequel. Well, Incredibles 2 had, was a sequel in a video game form. Um, and then... Um, what's it called? The... Uh, um, this trailer showed gameplay and some plot because it had some cutscenes to it. Um, Ooh. Because, Isn't that what most of the game is anyway? Well, yeah, but the um, they showed in Olympus Coliseum, Maleficent and Pete somehow survived Kingdom Hearts 2, which we knew from Recoded, and are looking for the black box that the person we don't know handed to the person we don't know in the video in the movie for Unchained X in 2.8. Yeah, the other problem with these, these, the, this game series is one of the most complicated plots, I think, ever. Yeah, I don't, it's unnecessarily complicated, too. Like, um, I think we'll eventually, like, talk about it more in depth. I'll try to explain it to you guys, and we'll, that'll take about an hour and a half, I feel like. Yes, because I used to watch Adam play it sometimes, and then the entire time I would ask, like, 30 questions about what was going on. But, like, for the, game, the yeah. gameplay for Kingdom Hearts 2... The gameplay for Kingdom Hearts 2 was actually, like, one of the stronger gameplay. Like, that was one of the more fun games to play. As a game that's optimized to be able to run and play through at level 1 without leveling up, and, like, 100% the game at that level. Um... But it's also super hard to do. Um, then, uh, and they also showed in the new trailer, um, he goes back to Twilight Town to try and resurrect Roxas, but for some reason the bad guy who died in Kingdom Hearts 2 is there, and then died again in Kingdom Hearts 3 I, You know what? I don't know. I don't care. The gameplay looks great. For some reason, Sora has a bunch of abilities that we never really talked about, but whatever. I don't care. Just give me the game. It's coming out at some point in the next three years, is the official statement. 
and the trailer ends with tune in at D three for uh, D twenty three for our new for our next trailer. And I'm like, you you know what you're doing at this point. Like, you you know what's going. Um, and then the last trailer was actually the first one that came out. Um, we talked about last episode what we thought was going to happen in the Pokemon Direct. Well, that happened literally the next day, so we can say what happened. Um, it was a reveal trailer for um, Pokemon Tournament is being ported to the uh, Switch. So, I guess that's a plus. Like, um, Do you have the Switch? No, I don't. I'm not made of money. I have gotten to play with a Switch. Did you like it? I thought that it was pretty cool. Yes. Um, I really only got to play Zelda on it. That's pretty much all it's out. But um, it's neat. It was really cool. I really like the idea of it. But um, it seems like there were some system design flaws in, like, the actual construction. Not, like, the software or hardware or whatever. Just, like, the outside and, like, the docking station. Uh Uh-huh. Um, cause if you aren't like incredibly careful with pulling your device out of the docking station, you can scratch your screen. Uh, hmm. I, I didn't hear that. I heard that there are cases where you, if you put the joy cons on wrong, you can lock them in. That sounds mm-hmm. fun too. Um, otherwise I think the device I think they pushed it too quick because there were some design flaws like that. Um, that it was kind of like, okay, well, that's kind of shoddy work. Why couldn't you have fixed these couple of things, you know? Yeah. Simply, those are simple fixes. <laughs> Since the first fix? Wii, Nintendo's been horrible with promoting or advertising any system that they create. Well, the. Because I, I think if, if you I ask most like... people on the street, I bet they don't even know that there's the new yeah. Nintendo system. Well, no, no, no. People it's, definitely know. It's the top-selling Nintendo... It's selling as fast as the Wii did. The yeah. system. Well, this one's real. I really like the idea of it. it. I know that it's neat because um, somebody that I work with has one, and he'll bring it in, and then when we don't have anything to do, we sit there and we play on it. It's cool. Sounds like a fun job. Um, <laughs> I have played Zelda, though, and I think I've talked about Zelda. It's, I... I I played it on the, um, what's it called? Um, I've played it on the Wii U. Um, The previous Zelda game that I played before trying to play that was on the, um, Game Boy Advanced. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I think the, uh, I think the Switch is going to sell better, and e- even better than what it's doing right now, once it has an actual game to cause an attach rate. That is true, because I can't, can't yeah. still not handle, like, real video games that, like, other companies create. Well, no, 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 it can. It'll be able no, to handle... No, this one is supposed to be able to... Oh, it's okay. supposed to be rivaling those, but... Right. It's it, obviously, obviously it's, won't be rivaling the new ones. And it's still not played even it's, it's on parallel in terms no, of No, because power. everything... I think they went to cartridges and downloads, didn't they? It, it, yeah, there are no CDs. It's only cartridges. Ah, yes. Yeah, so they're, they're still... They're fused to let you play DVD with it. And the cartridges are... Um, what's it called? Cartridges are SD cards. They're not That's even, smart, because they can hold a shit ton. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can do like like the sixty four gigabyte ones are really cheap now. So I mean, it, it, it's especially when you're buying them in bulk for a company like Nintendo, you'll be able they to. Just, they just build them too. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think Nintendo think has one... the like. They don't have the integration to do that. Nintendo. I don't think it's that hard to make a little SD card. Well, no, but if you don't already have the infrastructure for it, why would you do it? Like even even other companies that are uh, making Blu rays, they don't make their own Blu ray discs. They just buy them from Sony. Like for dirt cheap because they're like a penny a piece. Um, especially if you buy them in bulk. Um, but I think the uh, the switch is gonna get its once the switch has its first real thing. And the thing is too, for the switch they get they're lucky that no one bought the Wii U because you can port over all the Wii U games and mark them as new releases 
because no one played it. That's very true. Until like, you got the Wii U, I didn't know it was different. I thought it was just like, like uh, the new Wii, like the PlayStation. <laughs> like the PlayStation. I thought it was just like um, the slim, like, like how PlayStation, PlayStation was a does. slim model. Yeah, like I thought that's what it was. It's like or like uh, the Xbox 360, like newer one. The, the slim, or like the Xbox One S, which is actually the closest yeah, thing yeah. people thought it was, because it was like a a moderate upgrade to the Wii, um, that had no games, but had that cool screen. It yeah. was the uh, pre. I guess you can see the evolution into the Switch through the Wii U. Yeah, but like, I, I don't think it would be interesting once there are games you can actually play on it. Because right now, it's pretty much just a Zelda machine and like the little mini Wii games. Well, this like, week has it. Arms it's a coming Zelda out. Machine. <laughs> well, Arms comes out this week, which is their next. The big release okay. they've been marketing is car- is Arms. Then after that is... I think that it'll be awesome when they get Mario Kart on it, when they get out um, like Mario Party. Mario Kart did come out. Mario, I, Kart, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe got ported over to the Switch last I was time. I played one of the new Mario Parties, and it I've, was one of the most horrible experiences of my life. The last Mario Party oh, I really? played was 8. 8 was awful. They, they changed the rules. Yeah, everything's there's, changed now. I, there's no... Hmm. One, you all travel together... As like a group. Yes, that's oh. the most recent one. The most recent that's, one for the yeah. Wii U. That's uh, then. There's no coins anymore. It's all stars. Yeah. So they just took away the values of stars. stars. Yeah. Oh, the last one that I played was on the uh, GameCube, well, yeah. so I don't know. I think if they made a Mario I don't Party, know which one that one was. But it was. Like if they took Mario Party, like like if they did a best of of Mario Parties, I would. I'm gonna say conservatively one through six. And then did like we're gonna put together all of the best uh, boards, all the best things like that, uh, all the best game modes that were side, and then all the best mini game, or just put all of the fucking mini games in, and then go um, like in the current graphics level, and just say here you go, guys. That I would buy a Switch for. I was just about to say like that would tempt me into buying a Nintendo Switch. Because like I-, I know a lot of people don't actually like Mario Party Five for some reason, but I love Mario Party Five. Three is my favorite one. Like, um, I also had six, and six wasn't that bad, but you can tell six is where they started going off the rails a little bit. Which is the one where you can play with eight people, because you then you share a controller. That was that was Pretty seven. Good. That was seven. That was the first. That was the one where they travel the world, and it's all it's all the maps are based on different areas of the world. Mario Party Six is weird because it's the first one to have odd ruled maps. Like there are, like, also, isn't six one with the microphone and like you have six to... is the first of two with the microphone? Yeah, or the first of all of the rest after with the microphone because I think even eight has microphone mini games because the uh, the Wii mode has a microphone built into it. I have a question for the Playstationers. Sure. Um, what it, what are they releasing? Uh, PlayStation. What is their new console? The PlayStation just had the PS4 Pro come out. Um, which is a 4K version of the PS4. Unfortunately, developers are not supporting the 4K aspect of it in the same way Microsoft is, devel- is uh, developing first-party uh, first software in 4K. Mm-hmm. It also doesn't have a 4K Blu-ray player built in. So I bought, the, I bought the Xbox One S because it has the 4K Blu-ray player built in. It. And I also got uh, Rare Replay with it, so I got Viva Pinata. So that's really all I've played on, the Viva Pinata. And, um... Wow, that's exciting! <laughs> I have to say, I'm very excited for the Scorpio. Yeah. I all I know is that it. I'm, I'm gonna make the same joke that I've made the last few times we talked about Scorpio. It runs at the same speed LeBron does. Uh, six teraflops. Um. Uh, every uh, see that joke was funny the happy. first time I made it last year. <laughs> when when I made that joke last year, that joke was a lot better. Um, don't reuse your jokes. I, no, I re- I I I'm like a uh, I'm like a dad like that. I, I tend to reuse the same jokes over and over again, even if it's funny. Um, um, so the um, the Scorpio it does look interesting. I want to see. I, I thought the Scorpio was going to hurt sales of the One S, and I was kind of right. If you look at the the current sales ranking, um, the oh, PS4 yeah. is only leading because the switch why would you is with buy that when like you can wait a few more months and get the Scorpio. Yeah. So. But the uh, um, I might trade it in. I might trade in my console for a Scorpio depending on how good and how expensive. But 
the price for the Scorpio there that was rumored was like five ninety nine, six ninety nine, and I, that that's that's um, way too much. I will be buying it when it first comes out. So unless it is way too much, but like I think if it's 699, only five ninety nine, six ninety nine, then probably not an issue. I think um, I, I think for the average for the average person who's playing video games or for a parent, that might be a little bit of an issue. Because, like, that was what held back the PS3 well, okay. initially. That means that I won't be hanging out with those average people. <laughs> but I think um, for you and, like, pe- younger people that are paying it for themselves, it will mm-hmm. be popular. Mm-hmm. But, like, for a parent to buy it for the child, it probably yes. will be. Oh, especially year, if they don't, they don't this, understand. Which is, and then they also, and like, if, okay. they just, if they just bought them, like, the Xbox One S, too. And it's just, like, why do you need this, like, other yeah. giant thing? And then the other thing is, this holiday season... Um, Anyone who doesn't think the Switch is going to dominate this holiday season in terms of video game sales, I, I don't think they um, they know what they're talking about. The, the, Switch, the Switch is going to dominate because not only do they have all these games that have already come out, but they're also coming out with the new Super Mario game. Super Mario Odyssey yeah. comes out in holiday season of this year. Unless they push it back at E3, which is entirely possible considering the track record. The last few E3s have always been, please understand, we're pushing back the release of these games. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that's happened every time. So. Have you given the uh, E3 um, schedule? Oh, the E3. Yeah, I do have the E3 schedule. Not. Oh, I've got it. Load that up. Oh, okay. I've um, got it. Um, so Microsoft is at one thirty. Uh, Bethesda is today at eight thirty. I'm excited for both of those. I don't understand how Bethesda can own their own conference because wouldn't all they be talking about are like. Yeah. Don't they have one new game and then it's just like, look at Fallout 4, look at Skyrim for the Switch. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I, I don't understand how they can really do their own schedule. Like, even, like, like, Square Enix could do their own thing because they have so many smaller departments working on other games. Like, they have Final Fantasy Online, they have Kingdom Hearts, they have Final Fantasy XV's DLC, they have... Uh, Deuce X Human Revolution and that whole franchise. They have Hitman. Like, they have so many smaller franchises. Bethesda doesn't have... They have... Don't they have Quake and Doom? They have Prey that just came out. Uh, Fallout and Elder Scroll. Mm-hmm. And I'm probably neglecting a bunch, too. Um, they have Fallout... They have Fallout and, um... Elder Scroll and... Do you think they're going to announce a uh, anything new for Fallout Four? Um, like new no. DLC or like porting it over, or because I think they're going to have no. to announce a, a port with optimized graphics. Well, they might they Scorpio. might say that it's going to be that they're going to be, yeah, like you said, they might say that, but I don't think that they'll be adding any like DLCs. They might, but it's it's the game's been out for a while, so I think they're pretty much done with it. I think we're also going to get a release date for, um... Working on, like... What was that? Uh, you, it, it, your thing just, like, went robotic on me. Oh. Um, I heard it too. I don't know. Um, I don't know if they'll do anything. I don't, I think, I don't have I think any they're idea. Gonna, an, I think they're going to announce the release date for, uh, the Skyrim port to the Switch. Oh yeah, Ooh, that, sure. that's that's gonna happen today, uh, today. I think. Um, I think we got another year on that, though. Don't oh, we? absolutely. Um, but like, it, it, you know what the port's gonna be, and everyone's gonna be like, "Oh wow, this is great!" It's gonna be the Skyrim like collector's edition for the PS3. They're porting to the Switch because that's what uh, what's it called is um, FIFA. Oh, okay. Because that's how powerful. So then we've got we've got the. PC gaming show on Monday. Um, it says twelve p.m. It's yes. noon. That'd be noon. And then, time. what's Ubisoft? Ubisoft is like uh, mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed. Their new Assassin's Creed game gonna be shown off. They oh, might okay. do another game like Grow Home because they announced Grow Home two years ago. Then they announced Grow Up last year, and then there was they might do another one there. Um, That's right after the PC gaming show, and then um, Sony will be at 5.30, and then Nintendo at 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday. Nintendo is the one that I think could be the most interesting of them, because last year Sony did a lot of announcements, 
So this year is just going to be continuations of what we already know. Like, we know, um... Does she know her mic just turned off? Do you think? Probably not. Okay, <laughs> yeah. She just to say, yeah, her mic is disabled. I can oh, no, see no, no. the mute she's, symbol. She's yelling at someone. Okay. Um... <laughs> you just ruined the illusion of, um... <laughs> Media. I don't think anyone thinks we're all singing this. We we talked earlier about how we're coordinating across different time zones. Um, so I think Sony last year like they showed off Spider Man. This year's gonna get an actual gameplay trailer and a 2018 release of Spider Man. They showed off Death Stranding. We had the same thing with Death Stranding. Um, uh-huh. uh huh. How did you ruin the illusion of what? Oh, because oh, because he he was just like. Uh, her mic, like, she muted herself. Does she know she's muted? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, because, like, you have a fan going, the dog <laughs> and then the fan just turned off, I'm like, oh, I guess we lost her. Um, but I, I don't think... have a fan going. There's a fan I mean, going I do, somewhere. but it's like a ceiling fan. No, 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 but I can, uh, you can hear it. Um. Oh. I don't hear it. I think you're having a auditory illusion. Oh, okay. Or well, anyway. Stroke. Um, yeah, you're stroking out. <laughs> well, anyway. Do you smell toast? I'll call no, the news. Like, first podcast to have someone having a stroke on. Like, Live. Here. <laughs> yeah. Live stroke. <laughs> um, I'll tweet it. I'll tweet it. Don't worry. I've been, this, this past few, like, weeks, I've been blowing up on Twitter. Yeah, you have. A little bit. Because, like, every, like, I don't check Twitter. I get the email from Twitter, like, things you missed since you last logged in. And always number one is always Peter. Like, yeah. great. That's my dad. With I Trump have now. not been on Twitter in forever. It's because I tweet at celebrities my good ideas, and they're like, wow, that is a good idea. <laughs> We're making fun of people. Um, <laughs> so the, um, I, I think Nintendo's going to have a lot to announce because they need, I think Nintendo realizes they need to pad what's happening for the Switch between now and the holiday because it's going to fizzle out. Like, sales are going to fizzle out once people have it. Once people who have it for Zelda and have it for Mario Kart have it, the, it just, it, people aren't going to buy it anymore. So they need more stuff to drive sales. That's why I thought that they were going to announce Stars, which is where this whole thing came from, by the way. We still didn't finish talking about that. Um, I thought they were going to announce Pokemon Stars, which is going to be the third version of uh, Sun and Moon. Um, Maybe they can't because the Stars channel will sue them. Maybe. But that wasn't what I was thinking. But the, um, because that would have been a system seller. Like that would, I think, guaranteed that would have got healed up. Like, here's a new mainline Pokemon. That would have that would have sold console. Um, but then it isn't because like traditionally they have um, like their those Pokemon games on their handheld system. Well, this is it's a hybrid handheld home console, so you could also bring it with you on the go. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it, it's weird. So they, they could feasibly do a Pokemon game on there and it wouldn't be out of place. That um, is true. But like, if, I, if I'm if i Nintendo and this first year, this is going to be the year of ports. Because I want the good games to have tons of development time. Because look at how good uh, Breath of the Wild turned out after having six years of development time. So this year... I'm porting um, Super Mario 64, like HD, and Super Mario Sunshine HD. I'm porting um, uh, what else? Uh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, um, old Mario Party games, stuff like that that would really drive sales. But not just port them regular, but like Mario Party online. Like you have a subscription online service now that's on that's meant to be on par with Ninte- with uh, Sony and Microsoft for a third of the price. So just just go with that. Like use that to your advantage. Um, then um, then next year, like next year, you start with the the new releases, like. Brand, like that, that's why Stars would have worked too. You can reuse the assets from Sun and Moon and just port it over to the Switch. It's a lot easier than it seems. Um, so that that's why I thought that was. Um, 
So, so yeah, that's that's what that. Which brings us back to what we were talking about before. Um, the other announcements: Gold and Silver, the uh, the second generation Pokemon games, will be going to the uh, 3DS Virtual Console this September. Um, and they will also be compatible with Pokemon Bank, as Red, Blue, and Yellow were. So all the Pokemon you catch in that can be transferred to your current generation game. With stat modifications and their hidden abilities. Um, and then the big announcement this November, November 17th. Yes, it is three days before your birthday. Um, Thank you for remembering. <laughs> they will be announcing Pokemon Sun, uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which are two third versions of the previous game, which doesn't need to happen. IBD. What happened? I be, I'm trying to get that started. It's a new thing I made up. What does it mean? No, it's, it's IBD. People say IB down. Oh, okay. IBD. Um, it's you not like that. no. The, the last time <laughs> they did two third <laughs> versions of a game. The last time they did two third versions of a game was uh, Black Two and White Two, but there were such drastic differences in the story between Black and White that there was, and and between the games themselves, that you really couldn't do a. Uh, a third version that melded the two together neatly. Great. Well, no, no, no. I'm not saying in terms of the title. Yes, there's a very easy (laughs) title for that. But, like, there was an entire... There were two entire cities that looked vastly different based on which game you had. Like, in white, it was a forest, and in black, it was a city. Like, they looked entirely... They they were so drastically different that it, it was almost impossible for, you, for them to port it over and do one game in between the two. Um, then, um, this really, there's no real difference between Sun and Moon, besides which legend you encounter, and which Ultra They're Beast you encounter. Uh, habitable to humans. Like, uh, they, they, it, this just seems like they're trying to get people to, uh, to buy both. Like, it happens with every other game, but I don't buy both anymore. Because of uh, the GTS and like all that, um. So yeah, um, which brings us to this week's movie review. Wait, I have music news. Oh, go ahead. This was a very big two weeks in music. Um, all J, All J released a new album. It's uh-huh. very good. Uh, also, if you like music videos, I recommend watching All J's music videos. They're very well done. They like really have nothing to do with what the lyrics of the song are about. Mm-hmm. But just the vision, they're visually like very good. Um, the newest one, In Cold Blood, is really good. It's a, it follows a mouse around doing cool mouse shit, and it's like in super high quality, so it's really nice. Uh, mm-hmm. Arcade Fire released a new song, Everything Now, which is really good. It's a, it looks like they learned what how to use the instruments that were only in Reflector and then combine that with previous sounds they do. So it's a very new feel for them. Um, Lord is about to release a new album. Yeah, I knew that. They had a song called Sober. That's very good. Um, Radiohead released a new song, and the Foo Fighters released a new song. So, very, very big few weeks of music. Also, all of Taylor Swift's stuff is now on both Apple Music and on, um, what's it called? Apple Music and there was another one. Oh, uh, Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. That one, you have to pay, though. I might do that. Amazon music Amazon. comes. Amazon comes with your. Uh, no, no, no. Show. There's, there's um, like I have Amazon Music now, but there's Amazon Music Unlimited. Oh, okay. And yeah. that's um, that's that's their version of Apple Music, where, like, you can you can stream anything that you would be able to buy. So there's no oh, restrictions. Because okay. right now Amazon Music doesn't have. It's like Spotify. It doesn't have everything. It, just, it has a lot, but not everything. It has. It has enough. Basically. Yeah, so but Amazon Music Unlimited, it's like for students, it's like six bucks a month or something. Oh, I don't. Oh, I, you can. Or you can pay like for a year. I really like Amazon does that. You can pay for a year and they do a discount. Yeah. Because it's like sixty bucks a year or something like that. So I well, might just how, do that. That's how I pay for our website with Wix. Um, I just do. I pay the annual rate. And I just don't think about it. Makes my life a lot easier. Um. But I, what was the other thing? I, I never thought I would say this. I really like Ed Sheeran's new album, Divide. I like the Shape of You song. 
I do. I like that one. I like the other one, Castle on a Hill, and I like, I like um, Galway yeah. Girl. The worst part about, I guess, I don't really drive that much anymore, mm-hmm. and I don't. So I don't really listen to any new music at all, unless I like hunt it down for myself for bands I already like. So I don't really hear any like a song like Ed Sheeran. I would never think about looking up new songs. Mm-hmm. So I'm like missing out on the new pop music. Like I like this is like the first new album I've bought since 2009. Britney Spears' album? No, no, no. Actually, I take it back. I've I I don't count the anthology albums. Um, also mix one and two. Didn't because you buy Green Day's album? I did. I oh no, that's right. I did buy that. The physical copy of it. Yeah. Yeah, I did buy that. I bought Uno physical, and then I bought... Um, I got the other two digital, and then I bought um, Re- uh, Revolution Radio, which is really, really awful. Who was that even by? Green Day. That's their yeah. new, new album that came out this year. I didn't even know about that. Yeah, I saw it. At, I went to FYE, and I was looking for movies, and uh, I, they had, like, Green Day, Revolution Radio. Oh, cool. So I bought it, and I was like, this is just god awful. Um, because that, that trip was also the trip that I got Troll 2, the collector's edition, for $5. <laughs> so, I have that now. Um, that said six ninety nine. Did it say six ninety nine? Nice. Okay, I did pay six ninety nine. I bought some. I bought something else for five. <laughs> That's crap. I bought something else also, for $5. It was National High Five Day on Friday. Oh. Because it was Woo-hoo! 69 Haha, <laughs> I guess you got that. Is that really a thing, or is that just something you... No, I just decided that right now, because <laughs> your DVD was 69. Yeah. But then whenever you see 69, you have to say up top, and then high-five yeah. someone. That's the rule. <laughs> I, I, do, I do believe that. Um, so yeah, so this week's movie, uh, Logan, um, is the new, uh, the new thing. So we've all, we've all seen Logan in theaters, and we all saw it Again, after the fact, or yes, maybe I didn't order it fast enough, and I had to rent it. I mean, yeah, rent it on Amazon. Yeah, I got I got the 4K version of it for my not Please. actually 4K TV. Um, so I uh, I watched it. The noir version doesn't add anything <laughs> at all in the slightest. I like, couldn't watch. I didn't watch it because I couldn't rent. You couldn't rent just version. the noir version. Um, What's it, the noir version? They made the movie in black and white. Oh. Yeah, that, that's that's exactly the reaction you should have after that. Um, that's what Mad Max is doing, also. Well, Mad Max already did it. Here's the thing: if you request a black and white version of a movie, I'm convinced that's just you wanting other people to see the significance in the movie that you do. Why do you need validation from other people? Like if you want to like something, <laughs> like it. Why do you need? Why Are you, do you sure need... you're not just like looking into that way too much? No, because there's no purpose for this movie to be in black and white. Like nothing is added. Like it makes it harder to watch in places too, because like there are so many scenes that are ma- like the when they go in to get uh, Laura out of the house. The house is very dark. Any scene in the in not in the house in the uh, where they're holding Professor X. Any scene in there is very hard to see. Because everything's so dark, so Caliban can walk around. Yeah. So all those things are very hard to see. You can't really tell what's going on. Doesn't that make you feel like you're there? No. <laughs> if I was there, I would be seeing in color in the dark. Um. Then the other thing was the um, the movie itself is really good. Like this movie is good enough; it stands on its own. You don't need like you don't need that to. To prove the movie's good. Very true. I um, love this movie. Yeah, we it, it 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 is. This is a very strong year for adaptations. I um, bawled my freaking eyeballs out like excessively. Like people thought that I had been shot or something because I well, you're cried right, so movie. hard. That is possible. I uh, I also in Colorado got emotional, but I was <laughs> under. The influence of multiple substances. Yeah, you're you're not a good person to go by because you all you also you also got emotional at the ending of Entourage. So under the influence of substances. 
But also, like, like as very- I, was sleeping, I was crying, and like people looked at me like I was a crazy person, and I just wanted to be like, "Shut up! You don't even know." <laughs> The, the beginning scene when he, like, massacred all those people that were carjacking him, like, I was just laughing like a crazy yes. person. That was, like, we and we, we finally get to see Berserker Wolverine. Like, yes. he's been waiting a long time. And it's like, this is what it looks like when people get slashed in the face. Yeah, exactly. And if you go back and watch, um, if you go back and watch the, uh, the other one, X-Men Apocalypse... X Men Apocalypse gets a lot worse retroactively seeing Logan. Because, Especially when he gets all that shit like shoved through his body and there's just no blood. Yeah, like, like I, I I I watched um I rewatched X Men Apocalypse after watching it. And for me the best thing about Apocalypse is always the um what's it called? The um the Wolverine sequence. Because for me that was even better than the uh the Quicksilver, the first Quicksilver one. But I'm just I just mistook Apocalypse for what? Days of Future Past. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, Days of Future Past stays as good because there's only that one moment. But that like the, the the absence of blood there doesn't bother me. Like because it's like okay, PG-13. There's gonna be no blood from when he gets impaled in eight different spots. That's fine. Um, but the the complete absence of blood in him massacring everyone escaping the Weapon X facility is uh-huh. weird. That's, like, or there is blood, but there's no body. Like, it, everything's very implied in that scene, and it, it, it just, instead of, you see it overtly, and it's like, this is how it should have looked, this scene. This is how good that scene could have looked. And I think if the scene did look, if they if they risked the R rating on X-Men Apocalypse, then it might have gotten higher reviews. I don't think they want to do that though. No, I know. Um, but the uh, what else was this movie? Um, this was definitely part of one of the darker Marvel movies, though. Yeah. Oh yeah. Probably, if not the darkest. Well, it it, it does it, it really works because wasn't that it, Black Panther? <laughs> it really works. <laughs> it really works because it has um, what's it called? Because it doesn't, it's not beholden to any existing timeline. It's a standalone story, and if the X Men movies just did that for all of them and not try to fold them all together, then I feel like it would just go I a lot more smoothly. Love the X Men movies for the most part. I don't really like um, the past Certainly. couple. I guess it would be, um, but I like the original X Men movies, like the three. Well, very good. This one sta- um, continues the trend of if a a movie about the mutants is good, it's fantastic. If it's bad, it's awful. There's only yes. one real mid ground Fox made Marvel, movie, and that's the Wolverine. Um, yes. that wasn't that bad. But the um, X Men Origins, awful. Um, X three, awful. Uh, uh, and that's even, even that. I, yeah. I think I think the biggest problem with it is, like any other Fox Marvel movie, it doesn't really have a uh, a, a solid second act. Like if you, are we if just you, talking about Logan right now? Or are we talking about X three? Oh yeah, should we talk about Logan? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um <laughs> But I just it's a it's a problem that <laughs> all of them have. Do you guys think of the um, little girl? I liked her a lot. I thought she was great. I thought she did so good. You know, she totally problem... mimicked everything that like Wolverine does with the body language. I think she did fantastic. I see at least one member of the cast getting a Golden Globe nomination, if not an Oscar nomination. Yes. I could see I could see it. it's not gonna be all three. I could see it either being Hugh Jackman or um, Patrick, Patrick Stewart. Stewart or Daphne Keen getting a Best Supporting Actress. Um, um, Stephen Merchant was amazing in this movie. He was. Patrick but, Stewart I think, w- was good, but I don't know. I don't think it'll be him. I think Stephen Merchant deserves it the most. Like I don't. For most improved player. Because okay, he has no acting background at all. You you don't get an Oscar nomination for most improved. <laughs> 
That's not a thing. I think you should. Or, uh, like, he tried a lot. Um, no, I think... Th- I think the person who deserves it the most out of the cast is definitely Hugh Jackman for yeah. portraying a character who oh, doesn't yeah. know how to deal with deal with his emotions. Like... It, the, the, especially the, since this was, like, the last time that he's gonna be Wolverine. I might if anyone deserves it, it's him. I think if there's any... If there's any scene in him, I don't think there's going to be a scene that has the emotional impact of him after... Okay, so the whole sequence of him. I'm talking about the emotional arc, not the he action that is in the my middle. celebrity crush. Um, I'm, not, I'm talking the the actual dramatic arc, not the not the action sequence that cuts it up. Him uh-huh. coming back from helping the guy fix the water. Coming back, discovering that Professor X was stabbed through the chest by X-24. Then him picking him up, carrying him to the car. The entire time he's muttering, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it wasn't wasn't me. You should have yelled out some spoilers before then. Okay, the movie's been out on Blu-ray for about a month now, and the movie came out in theaters in March. Yeah. The the general rule of the show is we're going to to spoil the movie, and if you didn't go into this movie expecting every character to die, I don't know what to tell you. Um... So and then he um, he carries him to the car. Then the fight happens, and then he buries him. And then Wolverine's always a character who doesn't exactly. I didn't expect. I didn't expect him to die. Not the old oh, guy, the um, not Xavier. I didn't expect. I expected to die. To die. I expect. I I went into I, the movie fully. Maybe I was just in denial the entire time because even like in the end bits, I was like, and his hand pops up. And his hand pops up. He can't be dead. <laughs> no, I, I fully expect that. That is very different. No, I was I was scared that was going to happen or there was going to be any sort of movement. And then I was like, please do not like let that them be Superman. No, I'm like, come back, come back. And usually I'm all for like everyone dying at the end and like a tragic ending. That's I, what I like. But for Wolverine, I wanted him to be alive. Like I was like, come on. By the way, spe- speaking of the stuff moving at the very end, if you want to see a movie that I think perfectly sums up Zack Snyder's thought process for Batman v Superman, watch Nostalgia Critics Review. I forgot he was still alive. Because he, he does a review with uh, Cre- uh, Angry Joe, like he did for mm-hmm. Man of Steel, but it's he did it while the movie was still in theaters, so they act out all the scenes, so it's a little cringy. But the whole movie is framed around him and uh, Angry Joe talking to Zack Snyder, and... Um, he goes, but the movie ends, and it's like, the guy playing Zack is like, but the movie ends, and you see the grave, and you see the dirt come up, like, maybe, just maybe, one day, he might come back, and, like, any time they talk about <laughs> what Zack Snyder was thinking at, for various parts of the movie, like, I can guarantee that actually went through his head. Like, yeah, where he was like, oh, it was... he actually thought it was deep. Like... Yeah. Yeah, he did. So, but, back, back to this, the, um, then he, when he buries Professor X, and he has, and he's trying, and he's trying to talk at the grave. This is a guy who's yeah. never really ex- like had to express his emotions properly, and he doesn't know how to properly emote sadness. And he just sells that so well. I when have he- to say that there were definitely some like artsy fartsy kind of scenes in this. For Not sure. really. Yes, like you said, like the. The, the zooming in on the grave site and all that, and the girl turning the th- the the cross into an X, and it well, was that's all more symbolic very, was than, a little... than artsy, like like even like well, the entire symbolic and artsy fartsy, same thing. I, I hate having to bring up Zack Snyder in a review of this, but you kind of can't because you can't you can't really avoid it because this is what Watchmen should have. Uh, superhero movies, Zack Snyder, they go no. hand in hand. This is what Watchmen could have been. This movie is the tone that Watchmen should have been when it came out. Like, it, it, it's an old... Like, if you if you listen to... Like, if you watch the movie, you see... They talk about the X-Men like they actually existed. And they are, like, legends in the world. And everyone knows who they are. And now here they, they are, old, decrepit, and dying. What, two of them? Well, yeah, what's left of heaven already been killed. Yeah, I don't like that, um... That it was kind of a dick move on um, Logan's part to not tell the little girl who has the same shit in her. Like, yeah, hey, oh, you're gonna you're, you're gonna you know, die. You're gonna get twenty old years from now. You're gonna die. Well, no, he's pretty good. Years. Years. Oh no, yeah, never mind. Because he had bone for a long time. I'm happy they got rid of the bone because the bone was really shitty. Okay, he got the medal in the eighties. 
So 20 and years. No, no this like movie takes place in 2029. It's like 40 or 50 years. It's 2029. Okay, then he should like have been years. like, yo. The 80s, the 80s years are 30, the 80s were 30 you're gonna, years You're going to feel like you're getting cancer and die. Like, that's what that's going to feel like. That's what's going to happen, and nothing can help you, so live while you can. <laughs> like, he didn't tell her. He wasn't like, here's the time frame. <laughs> he didn't say shit. There was no real time for that to really fit into the movie and be like, okay. <laughs> Here's what's gonna happen to like, you. As as he's dying, instead of having the emotional, <laughs> like, moment, he just, like lays out. <laughs> like, here's some exposition about how you're gonna that die. Dick Ray, though, right? nah. Well, she saw him dying. I think she could piece together. She's not an idiot. Like, uh, and that was also something. I also, liked. the honest trailer for this is really good. I like didn't realize that all the children were Mexican until like the, the honest trailer happened. Yeah, and then also the, the nurse expert. Like found footage filmmaker nurse. Yeah, exactly. But then there's like scenes where it's like they're right, like who's filming this? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like someone filming that nurse, or like the person filming it, like gets killed. Yeah, and like um, I think it's like a bunch of Mexican children chased across the United States by a blonde guy named Donald. <laughs> like, <laughs> actually, the only part of this movie rewatching I was like, wow, that looked shitty. Is when they are first escaping, and then they hit the fence. Yeah. And then the fence, like, stretches? I, like, don't fucking understand what was going on. <laughs> I do like that it didn't... They didn't... That wasn't too bad. Because, I mean, usually in, like, movie scenes, they, they people hit fences and the fences just burst open. Yeah, that's that not, isn't more that's realistic. Not, that, that, that fucking doesn't happen. Because <laughs> a chain like fence like that's not sectioned. It just, like, exists. Like, it's just one single unit. That's how it's supposed to act. But yes. it looked, like, really bad. Like, that was the worst CGI, I think, in the whole movie. I think I'd have to see it again, because I don't remember it. I just remember going, oh, cool, they didn't burst through it. You know? Yeah, I, uh, what was the other thing with the, uh... There was one other really... Like, I think the whole scene with the family could have been basically omitted. I, 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 don't, I, I don't feel a need. Like, that scene doesn't, like... It doesn't add anything to the movie. No, it doesn't. Yeah, because they all die. Right, so it doesn't add anything to the movie. There's no stakes, there's no, like... Okay, like saying, when they yeah. when they, they messed the family, found like an empty abandoned building and gone and done the whole scenes there. Right. Are you saying that black people shouldn't be in movies? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you could have done the movie with an empty <laughs> house and had the same effect. No, because then it's like they destroy everything. They he like ruins. Are you everything saying? He touches. Are you saying that we should have black people killed on screen for dramatic effect? That's what ended up happening. <laughs> That's what it sounds <laughs> like. No, I'm saying it didn't matter. That's what it sounds <laughs> like to me. I was saying it didn't matter if they were black or white. They were just like a family they ha- happened upon. Like, but the thing is, when you I meet them, you're like, "Oh, they're gonna die." No matter what, they it wouldn't have mattered if there was a family there or not. I the think the family, family adds, itself, that family unit, did not dra- I think it did. add any more dramatic effect. I think it did. Not really. Black, um, Hispanic, yes. yellow, orange, purple. Oh my god! You don't like, tell it doesn't matter. You can't say yellow. yellow. <laughs> Yellow is the only one you can't use. That's what you can't say. Yellow or red. Those are you can't say those. Why? Those are a lot. More, those are a lot more derogatory. Yeah, exactly. Like okay, because, why is yellow derogatory? Because yellow because, was, like what was used to refer to Asian people. But like in a much but like it never, brown. but it never got past like that stage. Yeah, but so it's still a very it's still a derogatory exactly. term. Like white and black. Oh. I guess I got used to it so. Just right. a heads up. Yeah, don't, don't I didn't do realize. I'm sorry. <laughs> I never, you I never like, looked at an Asian like, person black, and went, wow, white. their skin's yellow. So. You, but you're going like black, white, Hispanic, yellow. Like It sounds like you're just continuing it like, <laughs> on to Asian as the next knowledgeable step. <laughs> no, I think it's added something because it showed like. And, like, no matter what he does, he'll fuck over anyone around him. Like, he can't well, save not, anyone. Well, not fuck over. It's not his yeah. fault this, in this case. Also, but, that that whole scene I fell right into when uh, Professor X gets stabbed by fake Logan. Yeah. I think it was partially oh, my mindset state in that scene. Well, but, like, I was so deep into Professor X talking about, like, what he had done. Yeah. And then I was like, and Logan was there, and I was like, okay, they're going to leave now. And then I was like, oh, no. And uh, what's it called? Um, 
Professor X finally realized Professor X has Alzheimer's for the entire movie, which by the way, I think I talked about this before. This is a better Alzheimer's. They actually story. portray Paul Alzheimer's correctly, unlike Marvel, which is just them looping back to the start of the conversation. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. this this the scene in the beginning where he's like, I always um I always know who you are, I don't always recognize you. Yeah. Like that's... I think they did a good job with that. And then him finally remembering at the end that he was the one who killed all the X Men. Like it was him who did it. And the thing is, too, a lot of people don't realize that just because he's, he's part of the, the good guys that we're told, the X-Men movies are very morally nebulous. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you, if you boil down what the X-Men are, it's two old men take a bunch of children to fight a proxy war against each other. Yeah. Like, Professor X is not a good guy. Like, he's That's just, what this movie helps show, too, where it's just like he was just on the other side. Yeah, he, and the thing is, too... Magneto was right. Hate that's to say true. it, this movie proves Magneto right. But that's like part of this whole movie, just like random parts in it. When I was watching, this be like, movie prove Magneto right. Oh, because, because it does, uh, Mag- Magneto was like always Magneto saying, said, Nick, go ahead. <laughs> that it was always, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that it was always that like the mutants against the normal people, and like if the people got a chance, they would destroy the mutants, mm-hmm. and that um and then. Professor X was like, no, we can, like, live in harmony together. Like, it's okay. But then the the second the humans got a chance to get rid of mutants, they did. They exterminated them, except for Logan, Mm -hmm. Caliban, and uh, Professor X. Well, Professor X took care of a big chunk of them. Yeah. (laughs) He, like, did a lot of the work. You're welcome, guys. I'm helping. It was 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 his last attempt to show humanity. I just feel like, they're probably dead, and they're dead, and they're dead. But yeah, like, um, also, the final Athens movie shows how to properly do a Passion of the Christ imagery. Um, if, if we can address that. Because, uh, it, it is the Passion of the Christ, again. Like, Batman v Superman also did it, but this one does it a lot better. And it's not mm. quite as heavy-handed. This, yeah, because, well, I don't think many people got that. You yeah. need Zack Snyder to make sure they get they it. They need Zack Snyder to beat you over the head with the cross that he died on to uh, yeah. make sure you get it. But no, this movie does also go through the cross and the show uh, and, and does more Jesus imagery. But And again, I'm going to say this. Jesus imagery isn't bad. And I actually do like that they did that in Batman v Superman. I just wish it wasn't so heavy-handed. That is true. Because Batman I do v like, Superman, um... the more you watch it, the more levels that you discover with it. Like how when you watch when you watch the movie that final scene after they pulled um, I almost said Jesus Superman down from on top of Doomsday he um, uh, he picks up um, and he, who on the way to killing Doomsday stumbles uh, twice yes. while carrying the the spear okay that's not the point though he um, who also gets stabbed by the spear at one point in the movie yeah. but we're, we're we're going we're going too far into that he. Um, he, uh, when he, at the end, we see, um, Batman in the role of St. Peter in the, in the, and, in the picture. And he is the one who builds the church of the Justice League on the, um, after the death of And A.B. Adams Jesus. helps him down. Like, they, they all help him down off of his cross. Yeah. And if you look in the background, there's all these telephone poles that are, that are crosses the, around the telephone them. poles that never actually exist in that way, but need to for this movie. So that way they actually look like crosses. And not get telephone yes. But um, in Logan, um, Califan is uh, Judas. Yes. Yes. Cause he has he to is. betray him and then he kills himself. But that, that's the other reason why Lex Luthor as Judas worked because Judas is integral to, um, he betrays Jesus, causes Jesus to die, but is also integral in, Proving fulfilling the Jesus's, prophecy. He's integral in proving Jesus' divinity. Yeah. Because that's if why he I doesn't like, die and come back, um, then he's proven wrong. I like Caliphant as Judas, where he's not a bad guy. It's just like... Uh, unrelated question. Unrelated question. Do the Orioles just suck this year, and I just didn't know it? Because this is the second straight game the Orioles are losing by five or more in the in the first inning to the Yankees. Oh, maybe. Oh, well, actually, a few weeks ago, this is all. Just being a Mets fan and being sad, um, <laughs> they had like the Mets were doing really bad for like two weeks straight, and They're they had like fourth in the division. 
they were like okay they were like projecting like their wind like percent wins for the rest of the year and someone gave them a two percent chance of winning any game for the rest of the season that's really stupid come on like i i get not liking the mess like that's just part of being human but you got to give them some credit like and they won so did they win both Lucky. games in the doubleheader yesterday or did they uh, only yes Okay, it was an or question, not. Well, they the last two games they won. So okay, yeah. so they won the both games with double header. Okay, um, but yeah, um, his death scene is very well done. Um, back on and that scene where he gets like he like injects himself. Yeah, that's the berserker mode Wolverine that we've been waiting uh, nine movies to see. And the, all the children murdering people that was cool too. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, like rip, ripping people apart with plants. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty darn cool. Um but I do I do think the uh and the way they they ended the uh, they killed off um the the doctor. Uh, that whole th- that whole scene with the final scene with the doctor was great where he's like uh he goes, "Oh, I think you knew my father." He's like, "Yeah. I think I killed him." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, that happened." And then he <laughs> and it's like he just shoots him in the head. <laughs> and just like that that's it. Um yeah. I also like that when they trapped X-24 under the car, they told everyone, run, because he's not actually dead. Like, they didn't just have him, like, they didn't go, oh, okay, we killed him. Mm-hmm. Like, they, 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 told him to, they told him to run. And it's also something that sums up perfectly my problem with CinemaSins nitpicking, because he, um, they do that, and he goes, why would anyone think this works? But then, like, literally in the continuation of the scene, Logan goes, run, now, he's not dead is literally the next line of dialogue. That's like that's why I stopped watching Cinema Sins because they just get so annoying. And I also don't have time to like so I don't feel like watching a half hour minute long. Yeah. Um, that's like hot. I like I feel like honest trailers they're cuz they're always consistently funny and they uh that's short. So even if it's not funny I'm like okay, well it's only like 4 minutes. Yeah, I don't feel like I waste a lot of time on that. Um So yeah, so um so how would you rate Logan? I give it a 10. Don't even have to ask if it's out of 10. Um, yeah, I would say 9.5. Only because I had an issue with... Um, the Black I, Family, I, we know. I, no, I feel like Caliban... You could have used someone else for Caliban. <laughs> um, I think I when we like, go back and average all your scores, they're going to they're make like a regression line. There's going to be like a trend... <laughs> towards like every how many black people are in the movie and what's your rating of the movie? I gave the movie a nine point five. So, mm-hmm. and if you're talking percent of cast, you could say about a third of the cast is black in this movie. Um, I give it a ten. I really, really liked it. I think for, for me, I don't think uh, this is how I grade essays too, where it doesn't have to be perfect to get to get a one hundred. I have yet to give a perfect ten. I, I I refuse to give a perfect. 10. Um. Until a movie actually does come along, then it's perfect. Um, well, Justice League's coming out. The only movie that I think could have, for this year, this is my favorite movie of the year, um, the only movie that could have unseated it until the third act would La La Land. No, La La Land was off. We talked about that already. Um, so, yeah, so um, before we wrap it up this week, I, we're gonna, I'm going to do uh, sales like we did last week, which people liked, apparently. Um, so we got a lot of lessons, so I guess we'll continue doing that um, as a recurring segment. Um, so uh, this week, a lot of new releases. Um, if you have a PlayStation, uh, first of all, ARMS does come out. We talked about that earlier for the Switch. That does come out on Friday for fifty nine ninety nine. Um, also this week is the licensed game Cars 3. Um, which is going to also be fifty nine ninety nine for the Switch, the Xbox, and the PlayStation. If you do not ha- already have Prey, that's on sale for thirty nine ninety nine, and you wanted to get that. Same thing for Horizon Zero Dawn, which is really good, and and will be the show seventeen, all thirty nine ninety nine. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda is marked down to thirty nine ninety nine as well. Uh, not worth that price, I don't think. The game isn't that good, and. Um, Grand Theft Auto Five is marked on twenty nine ninety nine for PS four and Xbox One. So Peter, if you were looking to get that PS four, like you said you were going to last week, you can. Get uh, I think I changed my mind again. You did. Oh. Probably not going to. Like, I thought it would make me play video games more, but I don't think it would. And then I'll then I just be annoyed at it. Like you, you spent um, the money on it. 
Um, yeah, because I do. I've been trying to play more on Steam, and that gives me enough. I actually beat Firewatch. It was very good. Um, I also started playing the Jurassic Park Telltale Games. Game. I hate. I, I don't buy. I refuse. To I uh, heard in the past that all Telltale games are just interactive cutscenes. Yes. And I thought that just meant like it was an exaggeration, and that no. it just had a lot of interactive cutscenes. No. But the entire game is. An interactive <laughs> but I also love Jurassic Park and anything Jurassic Park, so it's really good because it's uh the story is you play as these um the Harding who's the vet he's in the book and his daughter on the island and they um and they're like during the first movie so like all the shit in the first movie is happening and they have to do other shit that's kind of related to it so it's really good and they do a bunch of stuff that's in the book that's not in the movie just through these characters. And it's not all. And there's also puzzles in it, so it's not just interactive cutscenes. You have to solve puzzles, so that's kind of fun. So uh, also this week, this is at Best Buy, by the way. Um, if you buy a uh, both Best Buy and Target are advertising the Switch, which leads me to believe they'll be getting quantities of Switch in. So if you do want to get one, they are two ninety nine. Um, there is a new color Joy-Con coming out for it. The Joy-Con and the controllers on either side of it. Um, mm-hmm. You can get it in neon yellow for eighty dollars. Um, the PS4 uh, has the limited edition gold console coming out, and that will be two forty nine ninety nine on sale this week. Um, here's uh, an interesting one: if you buy a PSVR, you get a free PlayStation camera at Best Buy. Um, also, if you buy a three month Xbox Live Gold membership, you get a free copy of Rocket League. Yeah, pretty good. Um, then also coming out this week, uh, John Wick Chapter Two. Comes out on uh, Blu-ray and 4K and all that. Uh, the 4K Blu-ray is going to be twenty four ninety nine. They do have a steel book only at Best Buy for John Wick and John Wick Chapter Two coming out in pop art varieties uh, for nineteen ninety nine. Uh, also this week is the Lego Batman movie, uh, starting at twenty four ninety nine for the steel book, twenty dollars for the regular Blu-ray, uh, both uh, in three D and four K as well for twenty nine ninety nine each. Um, if you are a Spider-Man fan and want to uh, catch up on what happened in the previous Spider-Man iterations before you watch Spider-Man Homecoming next month, all five of the previous movies are coming out in a collectible steelbook edition at Best Buy for fifty nine ninety nine. Now, if that sounds excessive, keep in mind that it's five movies, so it's a little over $10 per movie in a collectible box. Um, at Target this week, if you buy a 20-count Frito-Lay multi-pack, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, you get a free $10 Target gift card. Um, and then they also have discounts. Ghost Recon Wildland, which is a phenomenal game, is down to $44.99. Prey uh, and Mass Effect Andromeda are both down to $39.99 like Best Buy. Resident Evil 7 for Honor are down to $39.99 as well. Um, Infinite Warfare down to $34.99. If they handed it out for free, I still wouldn't buy that game. Um, NBA 2K17, because the season is ending in a sweep of the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers... That game is marked down to twenty nine ninety nine in celebration of uh, the death of the king. They, um, they the Cavaliers won their last game. Oh, they did. So it's three one. Ah, oh, damn. Um, That's actually Michael. Do you know Michael Rapaport? The name sounds familiar. He's um he's like from New York. He's got red hair. He's like an oh, actor, okay. but he's like really funny, and um he hates LeBron James. So he goes to all he the games there. with a with a broom. But then the Cleveland fans started changing the Wikipedia page. And it's like, Michael Rappaport is a professional pole sucker. That's mature. <laughs> and it's like, all this funny stuff they put, changed. And it's, then it's just like, Michael Rappaport died in 2007. Um, NBA 2K17, if you want to buy that, twenty nine ninety nine, And Battlefield 1, uh, twenty nine ninety nine. That's a game I would very highly recommend as well. Uh, Battlefield 1. Lego World is kind of fun. Uh, that's nineteen ninety nine. Maybe that's worth picking up, too. Um... It's Minecraft, but with Legos, um, it's just the mob are a lot harder to kill. Um, but yeah, those are all this week's major deal. Um, also keep in mind, coming up, there are new uh, DVD releases for The Fate of the Furious. Um, Kong Skull Island, which is also phenomenal. Um, we haven't talked about that yet. And um, Oh, oh um, the new uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movie came out. I saw that. Was it good? Apparently, I heard it was better than, like... The last two. It was, like, the best one since the first one. Mm, 
best <laughs> one maybe since the first and second. I don't think the second one's that good. Well, you haven't seen the new one. Yeah, well, it's underneath the second. <laughs> um, I thought it was okay. I thought it was really good. I thought that it was going to be the end, but from what I've heard, it's not the end. No, I think they've already It would have been a very out. good place to leave it. I think they've already, like, it's definitely I confirmed that the sixth one is coming out. Yeah. Um, yes. But this would have been a very good way to end it all forever. What if it just keeps going and it's like <laughs> the 1920s? I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, like, they do have, doesn't Johnny Depp just love being... A DD, I think. Um, yeah, I feel like and, like, he carries the costume around with him wherever he goes. He so he can just, like, put it on and do whatever he wants with it. But I do have to eventually, like, what year is it? Like, it's been going on for a while. That's true. But it's, it, it's, 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 it's no, like, like uh, CD. In, the, um, in the movie, like, what year is it? Oh. I don't know. It's pre- that kind of just weird, because it's, like, the East India Trade Company makes a deal with Davy Jones or some shit like that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's the, uh, yeah, we are eventually going to talk about more cards. I, I think regrettably we're going to have to do it. Um, but yeah, so, uh, next week we have the 1999 Mummy movie with Brandon Fraser. I fucking, I haven't seen this movie in a while, but I fucking loved this movie when I was younger. Uh, I, watch, I would watch it all the, the time. Uh, the death of the, uh, the dark universe. This is already, like, they're not going to make any more now. I feel like that's going to happen. You only I saw um, uh, it was like a picture of Brendan Fraser, like smiling, really creepy. And just like when you read the reviews for the Mummy. <laughs> uh, then after that, we have Young Blood Hawk, which is a movie from the uh, early '60s. Uh, then we have Cars. Then we have Transformers: Age of Extinction. Is that the one with Kelsey Grammer? Is that the one with Kelsey Grammer? I don't know. I don't have an arm. My uh, my, my uh, headphones are plugged into a different spot. So, not an arm anymore. I think it is, though, because I don't think he was in any of the first three, and I don't think Shia LaBeouf was in three, either. It's Shia LaBeouf. Okay, well, I don't think he was in the third one, either. But, again, I haven't watched any of these movies, so I could be wrong. Uh, Age of Extinction is just the most recent one, with the Dinobots. Um, Dinobots. The Dinobots are in the new one, too, according to the trailer. Um, IBD. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm gonna see the new movie. I'm gonna be like, okay, like I don't understand why not. What's there I haven't to hate even seen the last one. That's what we're gonna. Watch I haven't seen. One. What was the third one called? Dark Side. No. I know. Okay, so Transformers. One of them was called Dark Side of the Moon. I think that's the third one. Yeah, because then the second one was Revenge of the Fallen. Yeah, I think I've seen the third one. I've seen the first one. I've seen pieces of the first one because my teacher in eighth grade got a bootleg copy and we watched it in class. I'm gonna call the police. <laughs> that's not even a crime that you call the police for. That's a, I mean, that's a yeah. Uh, yeah, they don't piracy. care. It's not. It's, it, piracy is a uh, person v person thing. That's a uh, civil suit. No, because there's the the thing. It's like the anti piracy enforcement agency. Yeah, but they all they do is tell the people you're pirating from, like, <laughs> here, like, if you want to sue them, go ahead. Which really, well, if you think them. about it, is a misapplication of the uh, FBI. I don't think so. Because the FBI is, is a law enforcement agency. So they're finding the information and bringing it to the attention of a company a, who can then sue you. Law because they're a law. Right, but it's not a, it's not a prosecutable crime. This is not a topic okay. we ever talk about. <laughs> okay, we're done. Moving we're done. on. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the um, you'll be happy because we right before we do our our gauntlet of all the worst movies we can find, uh, we have Kingsman Golden Circle. Ooh. So we we do have we do have one last good movie before we go into that. Disaster. We don't know if it's going to be good. What? We don't know. <laughs> no, no. Is that is the Golden Circle not the new one? Is that the new the, one? Or is the it... Golden Circle is the new one. So what's the original? <gasps> Secret Service. Kingsman. The Secret Service. <laughs> Kingsman. No, there definitely. I'm always excited about Kingsman too. <laughs> there definitely is a subtitle on it. Yeah, yeah but it's just is. the first. 
But it's just Kingsman, so that's just what it's called. No, it's not. It's called Kingsman the Secret Service. Fuck. No one calls it that. People just say Kingsman. Yeah, Kingsman but, okay. was awesome. Okay, but I, I still haven't watched it yet. I have it on Blu-ray. Yeah. Um, What's also, if you didn't pick up Bambi yet, here's a little reason why you should. <laughs> what? Bambi? You said yeah, like, you said you just said it like everyone's gonna like is rushing out to get Bambi. Well, it's, it's in the, it, they have it out of the vault. You know, you gotta pick it up while you can. Oh, I think it's on, I think it's on Netflix. No, it's I have a good Bambi story. It came with this. What is your cool? Like it, it's like it on your desk. It's nice. Did you put it on your desk? I'm gonna frame it and put it up on the wall. It has a little stand sure. back, so like you can like put it on your desk like that. Wow, beautiful. Your desk looks so serene. Why are there so many dildos? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, I understand three or four, but why, why do you need have ten? an industrial size thing of lotion? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so continue your Bambi story. <laughs> I was driving home on the highway. This is and the highway here is seventy five, and um. This sounds like you hit a deer. So like another story. <laughs> I didn't. Um, <laughs> I was all the way in the left hand side on the three lane highway. The guy was in the middle lane. He was me. He was a little ways in front of me. I saw a deer come out of like a little bush on the side, and I was like, "Oh no!" It kept going. Went, oh no! <laughs> And then it got hit by the car, and I was like, oh, no. And then it flew up into the air, and I lost sight of it from, like, the roof of my car. So I had to slow down so it didn't land on my car. It landed 10 feet in front of me with, like, all of its limbs all twisted up and, like, its tongue hanging out. And, like, I saw everything. Then did you, like, run over? And I checked to make sure that it was still dead. I, I ran it over to make sure it was actually dead. Well, no, I, I I waited for a second and, like, looked to see if it was dead. Because if it wasn't dead, I knew that none of those, like, people around me would have put it out of its misery. So I was just going to hit it with my car again. But since it was dead, I went around <laughs> From, like, cause you, so you stopped? And then were you going to, like, back up? And you're like, I need to get some speed. <laughs> no, I, it landed 10 feet in front of me. Oh, uh, so you just, like, sat there and watched so it? I saw bit. it. So I waited for a second to make sure that it was dead. Well, to, like, see if it was going to move or that? twitch or anything, and then it didn't. Well, in 10 so. feet, how fast could you possibly be going to, you know, put it out of its misery? At that point, you're just torturing the poor animal more. Yeah, you could have just, like... No, I would have crushed it. I was going to hang for its skull. Oh, okay. That'd, That'd be hard. You know, I had like, a plan. Like, <laughs> one tire for its head. And then did you, like, name that deer Bambi? Or yeah, just because like... it's a deer? <laughs> Well, it was um it wasn't quite a baby, but it wasn't an adult. So it was like the rebellious light. adolescent deer. It it seriously flew really freaking high into yeah, the air. Yeah, seventy five miles an hour is very fast. Yeah, yes. that's to get hit. And um So yeah, no, I just named it Bambi. <laughs> Because when like, I right, you know, told like, the story at work, they were like, you, "You watched Bambi get, you watched Bambi die." And I'm like, like, you better not move, Bambi. I'm gonna run over your skull. <laughs> well, you said I have a Bambi story. Was... I'm like, oh, okay. It has something to do with watching the movie when you were a kid. Not, you know, this is almost <laughs> entirely unrelated. It's it's tangentially rem- related at the. I like, thought it would have exploded with the cell, how fast the guy was going. Like, it, but there was no it blood. It rolled off the hood. Or like, is it just going? Gonna... It did not roll. <laughs> it flew upwards <laughs> and like spun in the air and stuff. And on Anyways. that note, we'll be back next week with a movie we can't possibly kill an animal watching. Um, that movie is The Mummy. Well, okay, some some people died. Did that tell you a lot of animals in that movie? The new yeah. mummy? Oh, no, the original. No, the original one. The 1999, not the original either. Oh, the 1999. One. The, no, the only one that matters. It's the Brendan Fraser vehicle. Okay, well, the Brendan Fraser mummy. That's one we're saying. Um, not the second one with the rock. The first that one. That one's good. 1999. Um, Can we just watch them all? Yeah. I don't have time for that. Okay. Okay. The rock's only in the second one for a little bit, like at the end. He's had a port. So yeah, so we have uh, the mummy is our next. 
Um, so we'll be back with that next week. Bye. Have a beautiful time. You don't have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see you. <laughs> I'm waiting for you guys. <laughs>